Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. This is Reality with DVD. Hi, how you doing? And on of Mother Wendy. And I just wanted to hop on just real quick for a real quick pipe and high tea. Now, I always say my pipe and high tea is going to be short, right? But, baby, I get to doing the commentary and I get to, you know, answering questions in my head on the different nuances of these different stories that come out or, you know, or what's being reported. And this all inf this is all information that's being reported in the news and being reported by other content creators. But what we do is we visit each other's channels and we visit other uh, content creators' information to see what their reactions are. That's why I do what I do when I um, already know something and I know that you've seen it from, you know, much bigger content creators than myself, I always say, well, you know, what was their reaction? Now, let me give my reaction. So my commentary is more reactionary. And so that's why I don't have a whole lot of, you know, documents and I may play an audio every once in a while, but I'm reacting to what I've heard or what I've already read. Now, moving right along. I want to talk about Neo and Sade, okay? Now, Neo and Sade had a kerfuffle the other day. I saw the video. I saw the audio. I saw them going back and forth. I saw it all in the shade room as well, just like all the other content, content creators. So you don't need to hear yet again her calling him Diddy Jr. I'm giving my reaction to the event, okay? So... <laughs> it's quite something, right? Now, the whole time I saw Neo, I saw him, and this is why we as humans who are fans of these people cannot ever side with them because they always do something that shocks us, right? Because he's shocking to me. I always looked at that at Neo as the unassuming nerd, the pulled up guy, you know, the guy in the Christmas movies that saves the sweet girl who's playing the piano and then they fall in love. I always looked at him as, as that type. Um, not because I don't think he's capable of anything. I think anybody's capable of anything. I just saw his personality as that type. And then over the years, I started hearing things. I'm like, mm, is he? A little, a little, who's that? And I was like, then my yada came out and she was really like talking about how he had kind of coerced her into not having any more children and then having her have a tube ligation. And I was like, Okay, well, that's kind of manipulative because he slides right into another relationship, right? And this relationship is with Crystal Crystal from Bad and Bougie. I don't recap the show. I did watch the first three episodes. I had heard it got canceled, so I'm not sure if it's still on. So he slides into this relationship with Crystal. There is still controversy around this relationship because allegedly there was some overlap with he and Monya. Okay, Crystal denies all of this. Then we find out once he and Crystal renew their vows, it's more information coming out about him sleeping with prostitutes. Go check out my um, Piper Hot Tea for that when Crystal is talking about how nonchalant he was about her cheating. And that gave her a clue that something was up. So he gets these prostitutes pregnant. And I'm shocked because literally, because he's such a genius on paper, I'm thinking he's smarter than that. Now, with all the things that have come out, I'm just I'm just keeping it 100 because this is one of my favorite artists, and I can go back to him because he is deceased. And uh, a lot of, you can check out Ty's Hot Much History. That's where I get a lot of my um, history on a lot of these uh and the, the scandalous, right? The scandalous chief from back in the day. It's kind of stuff that I already knew, but she kind of puts a pen in it. And tr trust me, baby, if you want to know about sources being cited, 
<laughs> Baby Ty is going to make sure that her eyes are dotted and her T's are all the way crossed. So I could definitely cite information from her. So we know about Prince, right? We know Prince has these, we, we know about Prince. He had all these little nuances about his personality that you kind of, kind of knew that you kind of picked up. You know, you kind of picked up that he liked the women and he kind of liked them young, right? So that's neither here nor there. But the great thing about Prince, and maybe because, you know, but he did pass in 2016, so you would think a lot of this stuff would have came out before now. He never, you never, you never knew about this stuff. Now Neo has a baby mama. He has one, two, three, maybe four confirmed baby's mothers, right? Then we have Sade. He said, Sade alleges that he has done things to her and has been treating her with DV and with disrespect and he has elf offs with the children in the home and i'm like what are you kidding and uggs all types of uggs and, and mushrooms and all this type of stuff yes, that's correct that was a cordless home phone ring i had one but you know in continuation before i was so rudely interrupted um I'm shocked. Now, I'm not shocked that he's a whore. <laughs> that I'm not shocked about. I'm not shocked about him having ill falls. And because, you know, in the words of the late great uh, Jimi Hendrix, it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll over here. <laughs> so, for some reason, nobody in that world, for sure, can stay away from the activity, the illegal activities, the, you know, or just she's retiring on the line of ele- ele- illegalities. Um, but I never thought that it would be a situation where he is a semi-polygamist or a, you know, doing these things in front of his children. I really, because he's such a genius on the paper, I really honestly thought that he was smarter than that. Smart enough to keep his business out of the streets, even if he did want to be a polygamist or whatever. Um, I don't know. He out here knocking itches, PHs off. Shit. I mean, dang. Um, And sometimes, because it is rumored that he is bisexual. And sometimes when males are bisexual and they just really want to keep it hen, they do become hypersexualized. And that's just a fact on that. Um, that's, you know, through studies and, you know, me and me being a psychological major and me just knowing human nature. But at the same time, I just don't think, even people are calling Sade ghetto and how she did it. She calling him Diddy Jr. and all this type of stuff and how she went into the home and, and she's one of those that will irritate you to the point when, where you want to go upside her head. That may be the case. She's still a woman. And she is a woman that he chose to have children with. Same thing in reverse. I don't know if she thought he was going to be with her. I. This man has gone from the quiet-looking boy next door to the dude he plays on a... Uh, BFM. Am I saying that right? The uh, <laughs> the show he plays on. Uh, about Big Meech. Is it BFM or BML? Black Mafia Family. Yeah, BML. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I want to talk about, off of that, um, move right along. I want to talk about Martell. Now, many years ago, I had heard about, Mar- not, not many years, but you know, I had heard about Martell's um, propensity to use um, corporal punishment with the children. 
this goes back to a video that I did about a mental health hoax. You can go back and look, check that out where I actually broke down in the video about all these things that are coming out now because, you know, there is a blogger and a huge blogger. Let me just say this. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers. She has done collaborations with a lot of the big ones. Um, she's done a lot of co uh, collaborations with, you know, some of the smaller ones. That's my fave. But what's weird about her is that she's telling her name. And um, who one of the tea creators who I don't know myself, uh, Anonymous T, she says she knows her real name. Then she brought out about when Tay Talks has uh, a little bit of a little bit of gingerbread house, and she wants to live like Mel. Um, I don't think all of these women are bitter. Let me just say that about the millimeters. I don't think they're all bitter. I don't think they're all just upset because one man cheated, as if this is what uh, Airy who is SW's husband, is saying, you know, these is just a bunch of bitter women and they've all banded together to harass people in regards to Martel and Martel is is just trying to live his life. Now, you know what, and, and, now my, and let me say again, she doesn't watch the show. What's weird to me about them is that and I'm going to say this about A.L. A.L. watched the show. A.L. recapped the show before he and Martel, uh, before he and Mel fell out, right? And I always say, Mel has her things too, okay? And I think the millimeters understand that Mel has her issues or she has her little ways of, you know, kind of dissing people or kind of throwing off on people that they just don't report about. I mean, diehard millimeters never, ever say that she does anything. They quick to come to her defense. Yes. They do that. And I, I defend right. Right? So... I've never heard any of them say, well, Mel did kind of antagonize that situation a little bit. Or, you know, Mel did, you know, like even with Kiki, because I saw like with Kiki that she did encourage Kiki to go on that trip to Houston. When she got to Houston, it was a whole nother story as if she had nothing to do with it. No, she didn't have anything to do with the invitation. Yes, um, it was Nell's trip, but she did put the... Um, idea in Kiki's head to ask Nell when she knew that everybody on that trip had some kind of issue with Kiki. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about that they never mentioned. But that is on the show. Outside of the show, let's talk about outside of the show. Outside of the show, I think that Martell is putting her through a living hell. And that's just my honest opinion on that. I think that he is so annoying. And, and the thing about it is, he's one of those types that, like, you know how, like, a feather falls on your nose and it looks so cute, but then it begins to tickle and make you sneeze? He's one of those types. That's how he starts out. And that is the true definition of a person that has narcissistic behaviors. A true definition of a borderline psychopath, in my opinion. And this is my opinion coming from me studying psychology and the human mind. So, in that being said, SW, over there on her channel, and I don't watch her. I unsubscribed her because long time ago, there was some inconsistencies about what she was saying about a show that I watched, and I can't remember what that show was. And I was like, wait a minute. That's not true, and that's not how that happened. I'm looking at the show. I had saw the show, and I said, that's not how that happened at all. 
Then she brought out the information about um, what was going on with Mary over there on um, the Real Housewives of SLC. And I said, oh, okay. And she teeter-totting on the edge of Tasha K territory for me. And I don't follow Tasha K anymore. That's because I like, even though we are all bloggers and we are commentating on different information, I kind of like for my information to have some truth in it. You know, not just to, you know, put it out there and then get clicks and views for it and then it comes out later that it's not true. That was, for me with Tasha, it was the whole um, Cardi B thing. I was definitely not on Cardi B's side and, and Tasha definitely had the right to commentate on whatever was going on with uh, Cardi B at the time. If Cardi B comes up in the news, she has the right to commentate on it. The problem that I had was I was like, some of this stuff I could tell she lied. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, that ain't making sense. That ain't Anna. And that's definitely what happened with SW for me. I was like, uh-uh. This lady. And same thing. With, and then her and all about the tea fell out, but they the same people. They commentate the same way. I don't like Monica. I stopped watching her. And she fell out with all her people that be on, that was on her panel. I was like, is this what this about? YouTube is about? And then I found people like Bundy and Jamie and and Scotty and all them. They don't really that sector of um Nisi Dixon, all them, that sector of and Richie Sky, they don't really get into the mix. They commentate. If they commentate and they mention other content creators, it's all about to uplift them. It's never to, oh, she said this. But some of them have come out and said how Sherelle reports. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I said her name. She who shall not be named because she said she didn't want any commentators, big or small, mentioning her fucking name. Okay? So that was definitely an accident. But I am going on my thoughts on how she reports. Okay? Now, I did a little research on her. She doesn't use her real name either. Mm-hmm. She has a name that goes in front of uh, that Sherelle world name. I did the research to find out where she gets her information. You know, I'm like, you know, if I'm going to talk about her, then I need to know a little something about her. And I'm going to keep that in my back pocket, what I found out. But she's always throwing out those with her, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you that. I know you, I know you. Say, why would you want to do that? And then she's upset with melanin melanin for doxing people. Aren't you doing the same thing that you're accusing other people of doing? But anyway, the point is, A.L. was on the show talking about his lawsuit. And... That's when I heard her say, now sometimes, you know, it's a loop. Because I don't follow her. It's a loop that comes up with, and I don't follow AI. And A, why do I keep calling him AI? AL anymore either. But sometimes it's a loop that comes up when you're watching from your phone and casting to the TV. And I heard him talking about that. And then I just was listening to her going off like, I'm going to tell this. I'm going to tell that. I'm going to tell where we lived. And she talked about how Shatavia uh, called her Tay Talks, her real name, lived in a little gingerbread house. And, and she wants to be so much like Mel that she's almost obsessed and all this type of stuff. And then she said, finally, I'm going to be a true Martell meter. She added nothing to the conversation about these new court documents that have come out. What she said was everything in opposite, everything against me. She said that Martell was the one who could film the children if, or could see the children. I think she said see the children could have visitation with the children if Mel could film with them. And I was like, wait a minute, that don't sound right. I 
heard before in the past, and I've seen the court documents before or where people had reported on him, that he said that if he could do corporal punishment, then the she could film the kid. Now, don't get it twisted. Mel does want to film the kids. I think they both do. But he's come up with some BS to make them not film kids. And then this fraternity stuff is coming up. And she said, I know it's a paternity test out there. And a paternity test needs to be put on, on front street. Where are the results, Melody Sheree? Hope. She keep calling her Hope, by the way. Where are the paternity test results? Now, let me just say this. If Sugar Mama is not motel, hotels, baby, then you don't know. By you not watching that show, you don't know Martel Hotel at all. Motel Hotel at all. Because if you knew anything about him, if he thought that that baby wasn't his for one brief iota of a millimeter of a micrometer of a second, that that baby wasn't his, he would have it all over the news. He will drop tea like a bi itch, okay? Don't ever get that twisted about him. And apparently you know nothing of him. I don't know Martell either. Why y'all always like, well, y'all don't even know these people. You know me either. We're reporting on stuff that comes to us, just like you're doing. You don't know him. And then by you not watching the show, obviously you don't know his behaviors. I at least know his behaviors. I know how he comes across. Did you see the Tasha Kane interview? This interview was supposed to be an interview that was supposed to bring good favor to him. That definitely did the opposite. Child back. But anyway, the point is, these reports have come out. And what really got me was two, well, three things. It's alleged that he has in the past made the children eat soap, hot sauce, and uh, twisting, pulling, and don't comb their hair. Now, uh, that's why uh, it's kind of odd when a lot of black men marry Caucasian women is because nine times out of ten, they don't know how to comb the mixed hair. I'm not going to call it black hair because it's not black hair it's mixed hair most of the time that gets tangled up sometimes it's a little kinkier than normal but normally it's tight curls right or loose curls like a Tia and Tamir so I'm gonna give him the BOD on that the benefit of the doubt because a lot of black men don't know how to, how to come here my dad did the best he could when my mom wasn't around at least he made us look presentable Right. According to these documents, the children are looking to shovel. Why in the world would you have children with you that have been seen on TV looking like who done it and what for? Why would you do that? That stuck out to me. I'm like, what? These children own pictures with male with red bottoms on. <laughs> and then they get with you and you don't comb their hair although I'll say this for my friends who have split custody when they have girls my my girls um, mothers used to have their hair braided before they got with their dad because they knew they were going to be end up looking a mess so if they were going to have two weeks on two weeks off like they do or whatever she would already have her hair braided before. And, you know, it wasn't a big deal with her. But, you know, this uh, this thing is, you know, beyond the rationality at this point with both of them. So then we have the hot sauce and the soap. My first time ever seeing soap being put in somebody's mouth was on that show. Um, that Christmas story show. I always thought that was out of line. I never thought that was appropriate. I heard um, some of the most religious people say they use hot sauce to keep from spanking. I mean, 
I would rather spank <laughs> and then put some hot sauce on a, a three or four year old's tongue and just let it sit there. That's above and beyond. And then, you know, of course, corporal punishment to the point where he and Tank had to be put in uh, therapy and he doesn't go to therapy. Sherelle, you don't see anything wrong with that uh, at all? There I go calling her name again. But um, it's just weird to me. You don't see anything wrong with that, not going to therapy to fix things between he and the son? What you said was, I got my ass whooped. He gets his ass whooped. Kids get their asses whooped. But it's clear it's beyond that. It's clear it's beyond just a regular, regular, schmegler ass whooping. A ass whooping to me is a couple swats on the behind with the apparatus of your choice. Right? Maybe a cup, maybe three. No more than that. That's within the realms of what's not considered abuse. But when you put hot sauce and leave it there and you washing, soap is paused. <laughs> Last time I checked. What is the what in the world? This is ridiculous. And these are things that were placed out there by a judge for him to stop doing. He's allowing trout mouth, slob on the knob like corn on the cob to disparage their mother. You can't disparage their mother. Do you understand that Sherelle world? I said it again. Dang. If I'm saying a name, it's because I'm talking. But um, he can't even disparage her mother, but he allows those children to hear nasty things being said about male by trial mouth. Girl, you even lucky you in the picture. I, I would say things like, I probably must say, I take that back. I wouldn't say anything. And then when you have your kid around those kids, because she is, in my opinion, neglected, and she sees these children who have just about everything, she is allegedly bullying them. Baby, see, that's why. That's exactly why when everybody's telling me, girl, you got to get married again. Girl, you got to find somebody. Uh-uh. Come be me. And Martell, what kind of dad are you? Uh, to allow this girl to, when you take them to your house. Oh, speaking of houses. Man, you ain't got nowhere to stay, man. You're not feeding the kids. But she's sitting up in, in, in um, Arian's kitchen talking about she the baddest cook. What is she cooking? Because the reports say, and the court documents say, that she's not you know, giving them proper nutrition. What in the world? These are all very much neglectful behaviors. I'm not understanding why we still have this same custody agreement in place. This seven days on, seven days off. I've said repeatedly. This man needs supervised visitation, especially now that we find out that those kids are being bullied by... Uh, uh, I said her name, but her mama says her name on the, on the, on the videos, too. But, you know, I meant to say... Uh, I meant not to mention her name in, the, um, in this video. I'll try to figure out a way to cut that out. But that's neither here nor there. The point is... What are we doing here? Again, I am a former social worker. Where is DHS? He said the DHR has been called. We call it DHS in Mississippi, but you know, DHS, DHR, all the same thing. Family Children's Service, all the same thing. I work there. I just don't understand how it's possible that this man is not under supervised visitation, at least until he completes therapy. At least until he could complete 
parenting class. This is beyond despicable, in my opinion. And as a person who's worked directly with DFX, uh, defects, you know, different names, as a person who's directly worked with that, it is kind of off-putting. And at the same time, I take it very personally. It's interesting to watch. It's very interesting to watch. And, and let me just say this. I think what really got me, because I really wasn't going to report on this because it's been reported on so much. I think what really got me is when I saw DJ Richard Sky's reaction. You talking about one of the fairest, I saw, in my opinion, and even though he has a huge platform, one of the fairest commentators on YouTube for him to get so disturbed that you can hear his voice cracking. And he was about to end the video before he could even start it because he was like reading it and then just almost shocked. And it was, and you could clearly hear in his voice that he was having trouble completing the video. Guys. And then you have a woman, a woman that just because she has an issue with males fans taking this man's side and reversing everything that's in these court documents to make Mel look like she's the person that's doing these things. To 555,000 subscribers. Think about that thing now. Now, mind you, it's probably not 555,000 people watching at one time. But the way YouTube algorithm works, just like on my TV, it'll push a video that you may be interested in. Like, it does mean, even though I'm not subscribed to her anymore, it'll say something like, you may be interested in this video. Just click the link. Or I put a little picture in the corner. A video that you may be interested in. Just click the link or click the picture because it knows by what you view, the algorithm does, by what you view the type of content that you like to watch. And it'll still recommend a content creator that you don't follow anymore because, like I said, my feed is full of Tasha K stuff. And I probably haven't watched a full video of hers in probably two, three years. I'm just saying, she's reaching people with these statements. You can believe that. I don't know. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, and, and I just couldn't. I couldn't do that to another woman that I'm clearly seeing that's, you know, going through it with her and her children and Martell. And I would just, even if I didn't like Mel, like she doesn't, I would just stay out of it. I wouldn't say anything. I'm going to be saying, oh, these bitter women, yeah, they just bitter. Every woman is not bitter that follows male. I'm not. <laughs> I'm cool when I have to do. When I say I'm cool when I have to do, like I just said, and for me to have to go through these type of things about when the people encouraging me to get married and have these crazy antics going around around my children. I'm going to try to protect them from things like that as much as, as I possibly can. And having a dude and his strange acting kids around them is a different story. But that's neither here nor there. I'm going to close. Come on in. Come on in. Hit the like button. Um, subscribe to my channel. Comment. Oh, yeah, excuse me. I'm... The uh, allergies and the pollen is eating a whole lot of us up, ain't it? <laughs> Of course, Tay got bad sinus, and anyway, I noticed that, you know, just by the way she talks, she has that all the time, but, um, yeah, yeah, that's got me, and I'm sniffing, and, and then my voice will go uh, nasally, <laughs> but this is, that's neither here nor there, um, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, share the video, um, 
and hit the notification bell button so you can be notified when I upload a video. Um, yeah, this is quite disturbing. Um, as I do when I close, I'm going to chunk them up. Deuces!